Hello, guys and gals, me, Mudahar. You know the day is here, ladies and gentlemen, when a good old Google <laughs> ruins its browser. Now, we've been talking about this ad block jihad that Google has had against ad blockers for, I want, I want to say months, if not years. But today, ladies and gentlemen, is the actual final day. So here I've got Google Chrome just opened up, and if you look at uBlock Origins, you can finally see that I got that big, gray button. <laughs> you cannot add this extension into Chrome. Now, what's really interesting about this too is obviously if you go to the old friends over at r slash Chrome, you know, this has been basically the top posts. A lot of individuals have effectively been saying that a lot of their extensions are gone. It feels that Chrome did some kind of extension purge. I've got four extensions turned off the same day. F you Google. F by the way, guys, at least uBlock Origin Lite still works, and it does the job. And one guy's like, it's not good enough blocking for me. YouTube ads started slipping through. That's my last straw. Switch to Brave yesterday. Now, if you want the TLDR version of this, th just, get, just get Brave, okay? Get the Brave browser. I use the Brave Lion every day on the internet, and it keeps me safe from those big, scary ads on the internet. But let's get a little bit deeper into it, right? So everyone is focusing on all the ad blockers being killed by MV3. So again, MV3, for anybody that doesn't know, is Manifest V3. Now, Manifest V3 is a new manifest system that is put into Google Chrome. And obviously, according to, you know, just Brave, for instance, right over here, it does block capabilities of web extensions, making privacy handling things a lot difficult. Uh, so in just short, it imposes new restrictions, a cap on blocking rules, the removal of background scripts, changes around cosmetic filtering, so on and so forth. So it actually, you know, the people in the space have made, uh, you know, new extensions that are MB three supported but it seems like a lot of things that they're trying to address are actually problems introduced with the limitations that manifest v3 has put in and these limitations are meant i and they're pushed in the sense that i guess they're they're providing more security and that can be debatable but the thing is at the end of it they are taking away extensions that a lot of people use on a daily basis to keep themselves safe on the internet so for instance like content blockers like uBlock origin it absolutely restricts how that extension can intercept or modify certain network requests. So for instance, back when, when Manifest V2 came with web request, the extensions could literally intercept, I believe, anything in real time. They could inspect all the content. They could block, redirect, do a lot more powerful things. But obviously with declarative net request, you know, this is where, again, if you were uBlock Origins, a very powerful ad blocker, a lot of your power was cut down because this didn't allow you to dynamically inspect or really modify a request content. There was limited versions like uBlock Origin Lite that existed, but it was never going to be as powerful as that original full featured ad blocker. Now, ad blockers are so important that even, you know, federal agencies, cybersecurity firms, everyone tells you that it's pretty much a mandatory requirement. I would say on a personal level, I would recommend you have a good ad blocker. I don't care if you use a, a antivirus. I don't use an antivirus on my systems. I just use common sense. But I would never browse the internet without any form of ad blocking just because there are so many malicious things that exist on the internet and you could probably ax a good 80, 90% of them if you removed ads from even tracking you or delivering to you with all these shady scams that exist all over, right? <laughs> Now, a lot of these companies are putting in tons of money into making the next big browser, right? So you got like companies like OpenAI that are making like the next big AI web browser. And, and again, the, the most important thing for, I guess, some of these companies is to have access over your browsing. Now, one of the things that I believe was caused for this manifest change probably was due to the fact that maybe it did really cut into Google's bottom line pretty heavily to have ads being blocked so effectively. Again, Google is more an advertising company than they really are just like anything else. And if you're take if you're if you're cutting into the bottom line in any capacity, I would have to imagine that it wouldn't be something that is kosher. Now, looking at the current browser market share in the world, you know, one of the things that should kind of like uh, pique your interest is how much of the internet is powered or used by Chrome, really, right? So you've got Chrome at 68.3%, meaning that most people definitely just use basic Google Chrome. They go to the site, they download it, you're good. Google has become the de facto, like Google Chrome has become the de facto browser.
But if you look at everything else, like Safari is the only other different engine, and that's like an Apple exclusive. And of course, you've got Edge, which is also just a fork of Chromium. You've also got Firefox, which is at 2.3%, the only real competitor. Samsung Internet is literally just Chrome reskinned for your Android phone. And of course, Opera, I believe current Opera is Chromium based. So again, let's say that you want to make sure that, you know, you want to deviate a little bit. You've really only got one other option, and that is Firefox. But before we do all of the actual changes, what if you wanted to keep using that uBlock origin a little bit longer on your actual, like, Google Chrome browser? So before a new update, there are ways to actually get access to uBlock origins again, or a lot of these manifest v2 extensions for a little bit longer. So for instance, let's say you're on Google Chrome, open up a new tab, and ladies and gentlemen, you wanna type in Chrome colon slash slash flags. And inside over here, you got like, warning experimental features ahead. Now underneath here, you'll see temporarily unexpire M136 flags or M137 flags. So depending on which version of Chrome that you're on, right, down the road, you will have to change this a few more times as the versions update. So over here, you want to go to M131 flags, you want to hit enable, and of course, it's going to ask you, you need to relaunch your browser. So again, we just hit that little relaunch button, everything is redropped, and boom, we're back at the Chrome flags menu. So now the Chrome flags menu, you want to go to extension, manifest, and then of course, you've got all of these like warning stages, disabled stages, unsupported stages, okay? So you want to go to allow legacy manifest versions, you wanna make sure these are all disabled up here and hopefully if all of this is done, one more relaunch should allow you in theory to keep uBlock Origins. So for instance, if we go back to the site, woo, we get to add that to Chrome. Now this doesn't mean that it's gonna be around forever, ladies and gentlemen. At some point, this will be sent to the big old cemetery in the sky. <laughs> so really what's a better change here? Is there any actual competitor? Well, for one, you can go to Brave Browser. Now, Brave Browser offers you a little bit of a compatibility layer for this. Like, they're kind of supporting Manifest V2 for a little bit right now. But that doesn't mean the support is guaranteed down into the future. So even if you go to Brave, which again is just another Chromium browser, a very good one in my opinion, and one that I use on a daily basis, let's say today was your chance to say, fuck Chrome, fuck Google, I'm gonna switch to the Firefox, okay? Well, Firefox is actually, from my understanding, keeping Manifest V2 pretty much on the board. So a lot of those ad blocking tools that Google wants to get rid of, Firefox is absolutely going to be down here and keeping it, right? But let's say that you don't like Firefox because you didn't enjoy some controversy they were in in the past. Maybe you're not down with them. Maybe you don't like the fact that this is still at its core you know, just a Google basically paying them money to be their competitor. And there's a whole, there's a whole like, you know, there, there's just a whole different video topic right there. I've probably covered it in the last several months. Uh, just because when I talk about browsers and stuff, when I talk about like big tech, Google, Microsoft, a lot of these companies are usually always involved in the pocketbooks of nearly all their competitors, especially when it comes to things like antitrust. But we're deviating. So a great option that is, you know, completely separate from this is something like LibreWolf. Now, if you go to LibreWolf, all right, you can see that this is a custom version of Firefox based on privacy, security, and freedom. So let's say, you know, you're somebody that wants no telemetry, you want a private search engine, you want content blockers, you want enhanced privacy, fast updates, and something that's open source, as most big browsers really are, I think, except for Safari, uh, yeah, you have access to this. So all you gotta do is click on that big blue installation button. Now, if you're a Windows user, you click on that Windows. If you're a Mac user, you click on the Macintosh. Or actually, if you just wanted a really easy option, you just go to your software manager, you go over here and you just type in the words Libre Wolf. And then you just click that, you hit that little fat install button, you make sure you hit like, uh, you, just, you just do continue, and boom, it's just installing for you, okay, done. So now if you guys wanna start up good old LibreWolf, here it is, boom, it just comes with DuckDuckGo already set. And of course, it's just Firefox with a lot more privacy thrown into it, you can go to the search engine, you can change it to whatever you want. And again, to show you your level of privacy and ad blocking, from the get-go, this already comes with every ad blocker and everything enabled. So again, if you're worried about browsing the internet, 
you don't have to worry too much. A lot of the alternatives are there. You know, even if Google or Chrome or any of these extensions want to take that away from you, you still don't have, if, if today was a wake up call when you loaded up your Chrome and, and you noticed that a bunch of your extensions were turned off, this should be a good wake up call for you to consider switching to other browsers because no matter what, I, I never will agree with the fact that these companies can take away functionality and replace it with things that ultimately are designed to benefit them over the actual end user. I think a lot of these guys can keep saying that privacy is more important for them. It's not. Things like user security is more important to them. Sure, I would imagine nobody wants a big hack and especially their software tainted in the process, but I would say that reducing the abilities for us to you know, increase our privacy on the internet, reduce the amount of ads that we see, reduce the amount of tracking is never a good end goal. And that's why projects like LibreWolf, that's why Brave, that's why a lot of these you know, uh, browsers exist because they fill that mark, because they sell a product basically, or they distribute a product rather that provides people with the privacy they want. And all it takes is a couple clicks for you to just switch right over. And it's that easy. Now that you have a new browser, bro, you never have to worry about Chrome again. I am surprised that people feel that they need to use Google Chrome uh, out of some necessity when literally so many other alternatives exist. And it, it takes even, like, I could understand switching to Linux is probably daunting, but dog, switching your browsers should be as easy as switching your fucking underwear at this point, okay? Like, come on, there is no excuse. <laughs> One thing that also really wilds me a lot too is apparently how many people use extensions on their browser now maybe i'm just like the one person in the world that doesn't but i feel like there's just a lot of people that use extensions i don't know if people have stuff for youtube where like you can see like video statistics i've seen that on a few people's like uh videos but i've also seen like people use like extensions that really re realistically i don't know why they would even need to expose their browser to you know these kind of unnecessary features or features that you could resolve in a matter of like clicks so for instance, a lot of actual extensions, like Emoji Keyboard Online, Free Weather Forecast, like that's what I'm talking about, bro. Why can't you just look up weather in your city right there and then? It'll, it's in there in every search browser. Unlock Discord, Dark Theme, which to be fair, I, I, I've probably played around with extensions like that. Volume Max could make sense. Unblock a YouTube VPN, Gecko Color Pick. A lot of these actual, um, extensions recently just uh, were outed for literally like um, stealing user data spying on people actual straight up malware so again one of the reasons why manifest v3 got really pushed was because of malware like this or because of bad extensions and it really feels like we're kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. where like obviously to take away our privacy to take away our ad blocking functionality a lot of these you know bad actors have kind of been the reason for these new uh, developments to be pushed now does manifest three uh, man uh, magically make you safer uh, no obviously not there's still going to be hackers that will find ways to attack millions of people all day every day so realistically if you want to make yourself just a little bit safer probably should cut as many of these extensions as you can simply because you're opening up unneeded attack surfaces even if an extension is good you never know down the road if things just change and you may not really focus on it you might actually install these things and forget so just be wary there but to move on, there's other things you can do to take back your privacy as well, which is one of the reasons I like talking about this stuff, because I think for people who use computers now, a lot of people think that I have to give up everything. I have to make myself unsafe because these big companies have said so. And the next thing I want to show you is literally just a search engine that you can use that is detached from Google and every other big tech company. And you can use it on your own device keeping yourself away from unneeded tracking and needless ads. Now, if you want to couple this with some extra levels of privacy, I have my own search engine aggregator that runs locally on my server. So for instance, I can use the Seer XNG to do my search browsing across multiple search engines without giving up my privacy, without giving up my information, and I get the benefit of everything, right? So literally right over here on the search engine, if I just go, why is Manifest V3 not safe or private? 
uh, I can just basically uh, hit, hit that big old search button. And granted, it's not as fast as some of the big cloud stuff, but with a response time of about one second, I'm getting results that are far better and far more aggregated from all of the search engines in the world. Uh, again, you can mix and match which ones work for you. And not only do you know I get the results that I really want, like better results than I would find on any standard search engine, I can literally have you know these things you know filtered out to like a week ago, yada yada yada. Uh, and then again, I can also use this to search for again the images uh, also news everything is just faster everything just runs a lot better for me over here and overall maybe it's not perfect but since it's also self-hosted a lot of what I search for a lot of my requests are anonymized I have more privacy and again if you're noticing there are no ads here and there is far less tracking than you can imagine this by far may be one of the safest ways to browse kind of the internet or at least search, especially in a world where we've got so many depreciating search engines and ever rising AI tools as well. This is the best way to keep yourself safe. These are just a few tools in my arsenal. And if you're interested, I'd be totally down with making a video showing you how you can set this up and have it running 24 hours on your home network without you, once you set it up, it's so easy to forget and let it just do its thing. So yeah, anyways, I've kept you here long enough. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.